Hi everyone, today we're going to learn about inverse functions and we are going to show you some definitions. The inverse function is a function that undoes another function. It is typically denoted as the inverse of f of x. That's how we read it. Notice that the negative 1 is not a power, it's just a notation to read this as the inverse function. Do not think of it as a mathematical operation of 1 over uh, a value. Functions have inverses if they have, if they are 1 to 1. And 1 to 1 function reminder that for every 1 input you have exactly 1 output. So match the functions with the which undo each other, look at what a quadratic, a square root would undo the quadratic. How about a, uh, let's go with the cubic root. Um, a cubic root will be undone with a cubic. So this would be like x cubed. Here would be the cubed root of the number. Um, a logarithmic function is something maybe new for you is dealing a logarithm means exponents so when you're talking about a logarithmic function you're talking about undoing exponents and then finally a linear function is undone by another linear function by adding and subtracting and dividing or multiplying here's a picture of what an inverse relationship looks like notice one function apples go in then the inverse function takes its output of lemons as an input for the inverse function, and then we're back with apples. So it goes apples for a function, turns it to lemons. Then the lemons go into the inverse function and turns them back into apples. As a two, um, as a t-chart for our x and y coordinates, you can see that our values of x and y are written here in the t-chart as negative 2 and 2. Look what happens for the inverse function. They swap places. The x and the y swap places. In the graph, the original is this upside down v. That's the absolute value and a negative of an absolute value. The inverse of it is the reflection about the x, y line, x equals y line. So there is the inverse function in its graph, and we will show you how to do them. But you can see it's simply by swapping the x and y coordinates. Let's start easy. Is this an inverse function, or is there an inverse function? My mistake. So this is a linear function. Does it pass the horizontal line test? Wait a minute. What's a horizontal line test? A vertical line test is one that we tested functions for the horizontal line test, we're checking to see if the inverse has a function or is a function. So I am going to test this with a horizontal line. If the horizontal line crosses in the function only one place, then it passes the horizontal line test and it indeed has an inverse function. So there it is. It is an in, or it will have an inverse function. Here are the steps. One, find the points. When you have a graph, find key points on a linear graph. The obvious ones are the x intercepts and the y intercepts. So here's the coordinate negative three zero. Here's another coordinate of zero one. To find the inverse, you're going to reciprocate or switch those two, not reciprocate, switch the x and the y. So I will have 0, negative 3 for one of my key points by switching the x with the y, and 1, 0. When I connect those two with a straight line, you can see that that also is a function, and it now is the inverse function. Notice it is a reflection about the x, y line because I swap the x with the y. The x, y line is here. 
from 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 2, etc. So here is the y equals x line. Let's practice. We have a cubic. This is a cubic function. I know from algebra 2 that a cubic function has an inflection point here at one point. So I'm going to pick a few points. Um, let me put it in a t-chart just so I can have my x and y. So this is my original function. I'm going to put down some key points here and maybe one more so I get branched out, one that's easy. This looks like it's even and here it looks like it's right there um, on an integer coordinate. So let me put those. I see I have a negative 8. Oh, my mistake. The x is negative 2 and the y is negative 8. Then I have a negative 1 and the y is negative 2. x is 0, y is negative 1, x is 1 y is 0, and the last one, x is 2, and y is 8. So this clearly is the mother function of x, cubic, cubic function. So I want to test now and find the inverse function. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller, and group it, and then make it smaller so I can move it out of the way. And let's do the inverse function. The inverse function is going to be the cubic because that will undo the cube. So simply though, I'm going to switch my x and my y and I'm going to write it like this. My um, inverse function, my x and now my y, but this is flipped. So I'll have a negative 8, negative 2, negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, and 8, 2. Plot those points. 8, 2, here's 1, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, negative 2, negative 1, and 8, negative, oh sorry, Eight. I missed the negative eight, negative two. There it is. Is this inverse function a function? And the question is yes. Is answered by yes. The inverse function is a function. Why? Because it passes the horizontal line test. Pause the video and see if you can do the quadratic. Here's the solution. How'd you do? Is this inverse function a function? And the answer should be no. This inverse function is not a function. Why? Because it doesn't not pass the, um, the original one did not pass the horizontal line test, so therefore the inverse will not pass the vertical line test. Here are a couple more that you can try. Pause the video and do it on your own. Here's the results. How'd you do? Both of them are have inverse functions. Let's find inverses with an algebraic uh, expression. Here, first step, when you have an algebraic expression, I'm going to change the f of x to a y and rewrite the problem with y. Swap my x and y. So now if x equals y plus 3 quantity squared minus 5. I'm going to step down to the second step. It asks me to solve for y. So I'm going to keep this form now, and I need to solve for y. To do that, I'm going to undo the subtraction by adding 5 
to both sides of the equation, and then to undo the square, I will take the square root of both sides. But don't forget, when you take the square root, you have two roots possible. When I square a negative or when I square a positive, I can get a positive solution. So this is your answer. You've got two solutions. So this final answer to solve for y, I would keep y is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of x plus 5. But the final answer, let's put it in inverse notation, is this. The inverse of x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of x plus 5. Is that an inverse? Is that inverse a function? Not as it's written, because we know that it will go like this, and therefore it will not pass the vertical line test, or vertical line test as it's reciprocated. Uh, switch. Pause the video and try the next one on your own. So this function was linear. It has a slope of negative one half, a positive one half, and a y-intercept of negative seven halves. So therefore, the inverse function is also a function. Here is one, another one. Would you pause the video and see if you can solve for the inverse of f? Um, I'll give you a moment. Just pause here. Remember to swap the x with the y and then solve for y. Ready? Pause it. Okay, I'm going to show you the solution. You ready? Welcome back. The solution should be the inverse of f of x is equal to plus or minus the square root of x plus 4 all over 3. Follow the steps. Review your work. How'd you do? Let's do one last function in the inverse. What if I gave you y is equal to the square root of x plus 2? The mother function would be a square root function. So y equals the square root of x. We know, hopefully, you remember that a function, a uh, parent function looks like this. So pause the video uh, and enter the values in. Actually, I'm going to enter in some here. We know that the smallest number we can have in a radical is 0. And I can take the square root of 1, and then I'm going to skip down to the square root of Four, and I can take that one, and another perfect square is 9. So I'm going to use those no numbers. My y in the parent function, square root of 0 is 0, square root of 1 is 1, square root of 4 is 2, and then here is the 3. So when you have the function, this translates two units to which way? Translates two units to the left. So that should help you with the other work. I'm going to fill it in and then you can check your work. So pause the video and we'll see. You ready for the solution? Not pause it. All right, here we go. Here's the solution. The parent function values are in black. The f of x function with the translation to two units to the left. Notice all the x coordinates have moved Two. So I took these values and I subtracted 2 from all of them. The y stayed the same. The inverse function is swapping the x with a y. There you have it. So that's all we have for today. Thank you for joining me and we'll see you soon. Have a good day. Bye-bye.